The second half of the slide lecture on early Christian, Jewish, and Byzantine art will begin with one of the greatest architectural wonders of all times. This is the Church of the Holy Wisdom, or Hagia Sophia, and it was built in Istanbul, but it was known as Constantinople at the time that this church was built. Now the first version of this church was built in 532. Now in 586, the dome collapsed in an earthquake. That was about 50 years after it was originally built. So what did they do? They just built it again 20 feet higher. And this is what we still see standing today. Now this building has a rich history. At first it was a Christian church for many hundreds of years. And then in the early 1400s, it was turned into a mosque. And at this point, they added the minarets that you see around the outside of the building. Now, nowadays, it's a secular museum. So if you look at this building, it's easy to see that it's similar to the Pantheon in Rome. But it also has the elements of the two church designs that we've looked at already this semester. They say that when you're in the dome and you look at these golden windows, you have a feeling that the dome is floating on a golden chain. And I've spoken to people who have been to this site and that's what they report. That to be inside of this space is just almost overwhelming. If you look closely at the picture to the left, follow my arrow, right there, those are people. That's how big this building is. Now we'll take a look at the Church of San Vital in Ravenna, Italy. This church was built um, about the same time as the Hagia Sophia, and it was built for St. Vitalis, who was martyred on this site. Now this church was built on the round plan rather than on the long plan. And in this church, you have the altar at the center, and there's an octagon surrounding the altar, each of them having a, a radiated niche going off of it. So it's an overwhelmingly beautiful structure in its own accord, but it's also known for its mosaics. Now mosaics were one of the primary ways that the uh, artists of the Middle Ages created pictures, especially in the churches. The mosaics were on the floors, on the walls, on the ceilings. And what this term actually means, it refers to pictures made from small pieces of colored marble or glass assembled on floors and walls. Now it was widely used in Roman times, but in the Middle Ages these pictures were used to convey oh, images that had a sacred context to them. They also used these mosaics to help in the church teachings, to help disseminate the gospel um, that was the Christians believed, because so many people were illiterate. This helped to illustrate the stories. Now they often use gold leaf, and this would make these images shimmer in the light. So that was partly why people began to worship the images themselves, and then we had the, the iconoclasm or the image smashing period of the church. Here we have the Monastery of St. Catherine on Mount Sinai in Egypt. Now this was built in this, around the same time as Hagia Sophia. But if you look at this desolate monastery, I find it so beautiful to consider that it's been a monastery since it was first built. Now, this was originally founded in the fourth century, but the monastery was initially associated with the burning bush of Moses. Supposedly, this is the site where Moses actually encountered the burning bush that the stories are told about in the Bible. Now, in the um, 10th or 11th century, this monastery was redirected to St. Catherine because it acquired her relics. Now, this was a big part of how the monasteries made money. People would come to see the relics of St. Catherine, and then they would leave some money behind, some alms, to help support the monastery's work. Because of iconoclasm, so many of the early images, such as this one, were destroyed. This is one of the few that remain, and it was created during the second half of the 6th century. It's at the monastery that we were just looking at on Mount Sinai. Now, this one is interesting because it's painted with encaustic. We had talked about that previously, as it was also used by the Romans. But what encaustic simply means is painting with colored wax. 
these paintings are actually really pretty durable but it's an interesting method because you just apply the one bit of paint and it cools immediately so you can't do sweeping areas with encaustic the technique really requires that the artist makes small dabs of paint another thing to notice about this particular icon is that the forms beneath the clothes are pretty much non-existent so at this point the human form is going further and further from a believable form and moving more into a stylized version so here we have the monastery churches at Ahosius Lucas in Greece. This is in central Greece and these are two churches that are built actually side by side. The one on the left is from the 11th century and the one on the right is from the 10th century. Now these are an excellent example of Middle Byzantine art. While we think of Greece as not really being part of the Byzantine Empire, it was. It was on the western edge of the empire and considered to be a sort of an outpost but nonetheless they had to have monasteries and churches and this is an excellent example we see the Greek styling here if you look closely you can see there's two different colors of bricks this is called a polychrome effect many colors is what that means and these early architects achieved this by building with stone and with brick together now the interior of the church is rather breathtaking here we have a church that was filled with mosaics and if you look closely you see that it had the same effect of the lights under the dome that we saw at Hagia Sophia. Also note that the stone is faced with this multicolored stone to give a really beautiful effect. But one other interesting note is that there was mosaics on three levels. So the top level of mosaics had the highest angels. Christ, you know, all that which is most venerated. The next level of mosaics presents Christ's life on earth. So that's kind of the earthly version of Christ's life. And then when you get down to the lower version where people that were worshiping at the church could actually come into contact with the mosaics, these mosaics are all saints. So that is this beautiful church in Greece. Now, just as we saw in the early Byzantine, uh, artists of the mid-Byzantine era, era, they made objects of worship and veneration for the wealthy classes. This would include the imperial court and also the people that held the greatest power within the church. This is an object called the Harbeville Triptych, and this was created in the mid-10th century. What's important to notice about this, one thing is the size, pretty small. When it's opened up, it's nine and a half inches by 11 inches. And when it's closed, it's about nine and a half by six. So it's really relatively small. And also this is carved out of ivory. So it's really an exquisite example of carving of ivory. And you know, we don't do that anymore because of um, endangered species. Now. Another thing to notice about this is that the, the figures are all pretty flat, like there's not any depth to this image. That's really indicative of the style of the period. The term triptych is a good one to remember. A triptych is, tri means three, and a triptych is a work of art that has three panels. We see this a lot in the Middle Ages and we saw it a lot in the Renaissance. The advantage of a triptych is that when it's opened up, it will stand by itself. So that makes it convenient. And then you can close it up and carry your altar with you. Painted books were some of the most important works of the Byzantine period. This was an, a way that artists could actually make work in the name of the church. And often monks were incredible artists and they spent their days illustrating these books. Now this is one called the Paris Psalter, and a Psalter is a sort of a personal prayer book. It was made for a great grandson of Constantinople by his father. He commissioned this work. But what is most notable about this work that's full of prayers and direct, spiritual direction, the most notable thing is these eight pages, these 14 pages of which eight depict David, the life of David. So these are illustrated pages that are 
phenomenal examples of the work of the period. There's a blend of sort of realism and abstraction and they have, they just provide such a great example of the artwork of the period. They're painted on vellum, which is actually calf skin. Now in this image, what we see is David composed, King David composing the Psalms years after he slayed Goliath. So now we'll conclude our look at Byzantine art by taking a look at a work of art from Russia. This is the Hospitality of Abraham and it was painted well, really about the time of the Renaissance and in this piece we see a real quality of figure and form. It's just beautifully um, rendered. Also notice how the figures are sort of stretched out. They're elongated. They've taken on the characteristic Byzantine look that the era is known for. So as we've looked at this whole section of art starting with just after the death of Christ and coming here to 1400, my feeling is we've seen art both evolve and devolve and now it's coming back around again in a new form. So this completes the slideshow and thank you so much for listening.